Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. I'd like to briefly thank the table, ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Chancellor of Fountain University, the President of Vice Admiral Jibril and Iran DCON. Thank you so very much for coming around here. Also, I'd like to invite to the front table the Chairman, Board of Trustees of Fountain University, a large data at the lab. Thank you so very much. Of National Infectious Society of Nigeria, the parents of the university, Dr. Kikelomo Wasila Sali. Thank you very much for coming around. Also, I'd like to introduce to us some of our officers in our midst right about now, ladies and gentlemen, and introduce to us the Buster of the University, Ajia Sinifat Anibalu. Thank you so much for coming around. Thank you, ma'am. Also, Alhamdulillah. الأول بلا انتداء والآخر بلا انتداء هو الذي لا يفنى ولا يقوم إلى ما يريد فخذه لما يريد فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على أسراف المسلمين سيدنا محمد ولا علي وصابي وسلم تسليما كثيرا دائما أبدا إلى يوم الدين أذكر الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير هو الله بتأكي بمكة الدين بكام فسيبو you commit it to your hand, can you be with us from the beginning to the end of the program? Guide our speaker, guide the participants, and may you bless all our efforts. The guy who passed the act, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki ar-Rahim, Ijiyaka na'abudu wa Ijiyaka na'sa'in, Benidina surat al-Muzakim, Surat al-Ladina an'amka alayhim, Wali manibudi alayhim wala doli. Amin. Yes, I have to speak with the Queen of Ireland and others to speak. No, the guest is in today. Let me once again formally welcome a convocation lecturer to the Garabad Rapata to the precincts of our university, the best fountain of knowledge in Nigeria, that is undergathered by pure ideas of Islam in the context of global character building and learning. Our choice of today's lecturer is not accidental. Since the current university admission came on board some four years ago, we established a tradition of engaging international intellectuals of exceptional standing as a proof of our strong commitment to excellence and rapprochement between the local and the global, the academia and the public, a way that demonstrates the status of our university as a unique brand with unlimited networks and vision. History is being based today. The immediate past two convocation lectures were delivered by world-acclaimed intellectual giants from the University of Texas at Austin, was in 2019, and again from Harvard University, was in 2020. For our distinguished lecture series, an emeritus professor from the University of Birmingham, Aaron Barber, was in trade later. But for COVID-19 pandemic in 2021, which of course is still ravaging now, our university will have hosted some other global scholars from the other side of the Atlantic. But again, this is the first time in our 15 year or so history that we are engaging a Nigerian intellectual of note with some 37 years of experience in the, in the academia as a convocation lecturer. So our lecturer and our university are making history today. By our records, our guest lecturer, our coaching lecturer has given lecture in more than 46 places, and of course, this is his fifth convocation lecture in recent time. <laughs> One that will be with a difference. In this locale, this area, the first person to do something is called Ashiwaju. And by the Universal of Powers conferred on me as the Vice Chancellor at the State and Congregation of this University. 
And you may confer on Professor Dumbbell's architecture as you are your Fountain University. But of course, we are going to announce the day of investigation data set. <laughs> Without preempting our guest lecturer and his presentation, allow me to also indicate that just as the choice of the lecturer was not accidental, the choice of topic was equally deliberate. Empowering the Nigerian youth through the ICG is the title of this convocation lecture. The current realities in the world require of universities as the apex of the educational system to key in into the demands of entrepreneurship, innovation, skill development, artificial intelligence, among other emerging phenomena with which the modern youth will have to interact, largely through the ICT facilities. Academic curricula and indeed educational certificates it will be less than relevant in all this future, which future will belong only to those who desire for it now. So the best person to give a global exposition of this idea in our national context could not have been better than a digital executive vice chairman of NCC, Professor Dambata. Himself, an accomplished academic reformer for some 37 years and is of course a virtual technocrat and administrator. <laughs> what this new digital dispensation entails and the spectacular feat that the actually of Fountain University has achieved over the past seven years or so has been well articulated in a small piece written by one John Owen Mwajuku, uh, which was published yesterday in the Daily Post. And there you can see what has been said about this achievement so far, so I don't need to bother you about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, Factory University has the best crop of imaginative students and faculties who are willing to collaborate and assist in the realization of the NCC projects. For instance, your GAP, the Digital Access Program, the Advanced Digital Appreciation Program for tertiary institutions is adapting, the wireless cloud and computer-based test facilities, and others. So in the same way that we, the NCC, are doing a wonderful job, we want to benefit from the NCC's educational technical, developmental, and infrastructural assistance. And of course, the supply of soft and hardware computer units. Whereas as a private university, we have optimally appropriated web-based resources for improved learning, teaching, and research, and we are overly optimistic that our promotion lecturers will deploy this visionary disposition to impress on ICT service providers, the MTN, the Blue, the Airtel, and so on, to assist Fountain University to become a formidable partner in the realization of such goals as are embedded in the university campus connectivity, the UNCC project, based on uh, transceiver station project, transport transmission infrastructure, that is the big train, among other projects that are being implemented by the Universal Service Production Fund, USPF, uh, the unit at NCC. Let me conclude this welcome address. Let me face it by sharing a short anecdotal aphorism about Fountain University. With this August gathering in the month of uh, January, our lecturers and visitors come to Fountain Universities as guests. As a live as friends and stakeholders. And this I can assure you will be no different with Ashwaru Professor Dambata, the Octaloma of the Digital World. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I have the uh, guest lecturer for today to stand while I recite this citation? Hmm. First of 
Sir Umaru Karuba Dampata was born on the 22nd of January 1959 in Dampata, Kansas State. He earned his bachelor and master's degree in engineering from the prestigious Technical University of West York in Poland and a PhD from the Institute of Science and Technology, University of Manchester, United Kingdom. He started his academic career at Bayaro University, Kano, where he lectured in telecommunication engineering. In the course of a brilliant academic career, which spanned over a period of 30 years, Maru earned many academic and administrative offices, including the Deanship of Faculty of Science and Technology and the supervision of, of, of many students in cutting-edge research projects. He was the active vice chancellor of the Kansas State University of Science and Technology for a while before he was appointed by the President Muhammad Buhari CFR as the executive vice chairman and the chief executive of the Nigerian Communication Commission, NCC. His exceptional professional and managerial capability was proven when the expected 30% national brand target for Nigeria was already surpassed in 2018 under election. There is no greater testimony to his astounding achievement and performance as the ultimate of NCC than the renewal of his mandate by Mr. President for the second time for five more years in office with effect from July 2020. <laughs> Through effective regulatory regime, various cutting head initiatives, Dampata strengthened under his watchman the contribution of the telecommunications sector to the Nigerian GDP in terms of investment inflow, with increase of with increase from $6 billion to over $70 billion since 2015. As Vice President of Digital Bridge Institute, Dampata developed expertise in several areas of information communication technology, which include, but not limited, to the regulation of telecommunication sector of the Nigerian economy, among others. He strived in reviving the Emergency Communication Center and the introduction of harmonized National Emergency Communication Number 112 helped the NCC to win the International Public Relations Association Moving Award in 2001. The center played a major role in curtailing COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. Professor Dan Bata, a prolific author of books and journals with high impact in academia and professional circles, he is the recipient of many distinguished awards in career and life achievement, including the prestigious Z Prize in Professional Leadership. Professor Dan Bata, Asa, Asa, two times as a member of Council for the Regulatory Regulation and Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Korea. He is a fellow of many professional bodies, including the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Nigerian Academy Engineer Academy of Engineering. New Renewal and Alternative Energy Society, as well as the Nigerian Institute of Electrical and Nigerian Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineer. Ladies and gentlemen, let me invite Professor Dambata, an iconic author, professional administrator, <laughs> communicating expert. They serve a business philanthropy to the podium to give this presentation.
for this combined and level and safe conversation. Chairman Pound University, Chop Board of Trustees, the Chancellor of Pound University of the Ocean, Chop the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Government Council of the Founding University of the Ocean, Chop Board, members of the Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor and other principal officers of the University, members of the University Senate, deans of colleges and heads, departments, members of the University congregation, members of faculty, and non staff, graduate students, and other students. Members of the university community, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press. I have an 18 page lecture to deliver in 45 minutes. Looks like a tall order, you know, to do this. And as such, I will be going over some aspects of my lecture superficially and dedicate more time to the aspect of the lecture that concerns the students, especially the graduate students. Because I feel they will benefit more from this lecture by listening to that part of the lecture than by listening to other parts. It is my pleasure and privilege to be invited to present the convocation lecture at the combined 10th and 11th convocation ceremony of this great university. I sincerely appreciate the Vice Chancellor and the Senate of this institution for considering me worthy of this honor amidst the myriads of eminent Nigerians look at political issues of national interest and possible ways of addressing them. Thank you for this consideration. It's an information and communications technology advocate and a university professor that has spent more than three and a half decades teaching and mentoring students and one who has followed the transformation of power information and communication technology in Nigeria and the world but I'm convinced there is no better topic for our conversation today than ICT. I have therefore typed my lecture empowering the Nigerian news through information and communications knowledge. First of all, I will start this lecture by actually congratulating the university management of this auspicious occasion, the 10th Governance Convocation Ceremony of this university. And all the graduating students for successfully navigating through the very demanding academic rigor reach this high academic endeavor. It is therefore exciting to witness this large number of graduate students from various faculties of the university today. Introduction. The advent of information and communications technology has reinvigorated information management by collapsing barriers of dissemination, exchange, storage, processing, and distribution amongst others, as described by the United Nations government. To make reference to two economists, world economists of global economy. One is Steve Hicks and the other one is Roger. Certainly, there is an extension of this definition. And they say digital transformation is the process of driving and accelerating this uh, uh, social and economic transformation by leveraging the power of information and communication technology. So the two are intertwined. ICT 
and information, I mean, information and communication technology and social and economic transformation. You cannot separate the two. And then there is another aspect to this that how do we effectively shape our physical, social, economic, and intellectual environment? Desired ends that studies have shown that this can effectively be done by leveraging the power of information communication technology. So we have with us, as I talk or as I speak, a techno economic paradigm shift that is ICT driven. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, ICT as much computing, information, the process of profound fundamental changes in the way people socialize, collaborate, innovate, engage. Therefore, like I said, a process of fundamental structural change in a shift to a new techno economic paradigm enabled by ICT. ICT relevance and empowerment. ICT is now synonymous with empowerment as it transforms processes efficiently and plays the role of an enabler in various sectors of the economy, foundation and development, including commerce, agriculture, health, security, governance, etc. The impact of the ICT revolution is now evident in virtually all countries, Nigeria inclusive, and is likely to continue in the years to come as technology penetrates and posters vital changes in all sectors and dimensions of the human endeavor. Notable global transformations connecting ICT and news empowerment include Uber. We all know Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no There are more than 700, I mean, 75 million active Uber riders across the world as we speak today. And it is available in many countries, including Nigeria. There are more than it is available in more than 80 countries worldwide. And more than 5 billion riders use an Uber platform as we speak. Over 3 million people ride for Uber. Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. But in 2021, there are over 7 million listings on Airbnb worldwide. And there are hundred thousand cities with active Airbnb listings. Also there are 420 countries and regions with active Airbnb listings. Facebook, an over-the-top service, is the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Facebook reported almost 1.9 million daily active users and with roughly 2.89 billion monthly active users. Facebook is the most important popular social network worldwide. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory, has 828 million annual active consumers across its China retail marketplaces at the end of June 2021. Uh, this information is fascinating. 1.7 megabytes of new information is created every second by every human being, including us. Six hours, 42 minutes, is the average number of hours by day users spend on the internet. Some spend much, much more than that. Strengthening ICT adoption, national development. The federal government has adopted the digital revolution of ICT to then support for other critical sectors of the economy 
in terms of efficiency, productivity, and transparency. These are aiding job creation, better governance, youth empowerment, and overall social economic development. In fact, the impact of ICT from social economic development and transformation has been so monumental that it is credited with sharing what we call now the proposed industrial revolution. The ICT sector, ladies and gentlemen, indeed has consistently been contributing uh, to the Nigerian GDP an amount that is about 10% for over 10 years, um, which is of first, first quarter of 2020 along the telecom sector contributed 1.45% to the GDP of this country. Also, Nigeria is Africa's largest ICT market, with 82% of the continent's telecom subscribers and 29% of internet usage. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, Sub-Saharan Africa, where Nigeria is located, is also projected to be the fastest growing region with respect to ICT, with a compound annual growth rate of 4.5%. An additional subscriber and enrollment of over 167 million expected in the next five years. No surprise, Nigeria is expected to account for over 55% of this total. As a measure to consolidate the gains of the ICT revolution in Nigeria, the federal government, I mean the national digital economic policy and strategy for the years 2020-2030 with according in depth the national broadband plan for the years 2020-2025 were launched by His Excellency President Muhammad Bukhari CFR further strengthened ICT usage and adoption in our country. The NDEPS has eight pillars which I don't want to repeat here which we are carefully selected to include all the key aspects that Nigeria needs to focus on in order to actively participate in the global digital economy and to empower its human use population. Nigerian National Broadband Plan, on the other hand, is a federal government's policy document which implementation will maximize the benefits of broadband by establishing enabling institutions and enacting necessary regulatory and developmental methods to deepen broadband access and penetration across the country for national development. The broadband vision for Nigeria is one of a society of connected communities with high-speed broadband access and connectivity that will facilitate faster social economic investment of the nation's people. While talking about connectivity, access, Connectivity and emerge in the opinion of the World Bank is a foundation for future growth, social and economic transformation. And this is not being taken lightly by the Nigerian government. Accordingly, an effective coverage of oh sorry, the plan talking here about the National Broadband Plan uh, provides insights into what high speed internet is as connectivity is expected to deliver a minimum of 10 megabits per second in rural areas and 25 megabits per second in urban areas. Accordingly, an effective coverage to be available according to the plan to at least 90 percent of the population by the year 2025. And you know, at a price of more than 390 Naira per gigabit of internet. This price has since come down to about 280 as we speak, even before we reach 2025. Accordingly, an effective coverage of, oh sorry, the NCC has also developed a strategic vision implementation plan for the years 2021 to 2025 that leveraged on the provisions of the NDEX and NNDT as well as the Strategic Management Plan, SMP 2020-24, of the NCC. The SPV 
credit institutions that love yourselves in the ICT ecosystem, please take note of the following ICT segments for your empowerment. Blockchain. Blockchain technology allows a network of computers to agree at a regular, inter at regular intervals on the true state of distributed health. This will disrupt all business sectors. Artificial intelligence, well, is another area where students will not be able to establish credibility. There's green faster in that area of the ecosystem where students, you know, graduating can establish credibility. Uh, I think when we are the benefits of the students in the central sector, go through those uh, elements, you know, or components of the lecture. And if you wish to focus on technology trends, I also encourage you to pay attention to the following five areas. High power connectivity, super computing, comprehensive deployment of broadband infrastructure, and attract relevant investments to remain pivotal for the transformation of other sectors of the economy through the ICT. And in the area of infrastructure deployment, I think we have a model, we call it the infrastructure uh, model, where we expect to deploy broadband infrastructure in all the 774 local economic areas of the country to the point of connectivity or a point of connection of about 10 gigabits per second, as I mentioned earlier. This plan is underway and is being implemented as we speak. So in no part of Nigeria we will be left without broadband connectivity. Some of the Commission's initiatives include ICT MOPs, support and engagement. This forum brings together key players, actors and news in the Nigerian tech ecosystem to deliberate and suggest policy frameworks, strategies that could further develop the sector, thereby catalyzing improving global content in the ICT communication sector. Other objectives of this uh, forum are unleashing the innovative and creative skills of our team youth while leveraging on the enormous powers of digital technology, promoting ICT innovation and tech entrepreneurship, building digital skills and capacity necessary to lift for Nigeria to the digital economy and the post-industrial revolution. Connecting the tech enthusiasts, tech entrepreneurs, ICT innovators, and key stakeholders in the tech ecosystem for experience sharing, dialogue creating partnerships, mutually rewarding collaborations, etc. Facilitating local content development in the ICT sector, leveraging on the powers of digital technology, provide light and distribution to societal challenges and create wealth. See a strategy, support Mr. President's next level agenda of moving 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. Through this forum, databases of technological hubs have been created a view towards providing support and enabling environment for them to strive. Annual ICT innovation and competition exhibition. This program is aimed at facilitating sustainable digital startups development through a platform to showcase their digital innovative solutions. A competition offers tech enthusiasts, other stakeholders with novel ideas and tech solutions, the opportunity to provide to industry and societal address societal challenges, showcase their creative innovations. It's also targeted at the youth of the country. The event offers visibility to the participating startups create market fractions for their products and services will also enable them to build new business relationships and partnerships with venture capitalists and investors, other investors who may have picked interest in their innovations. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, the objectives of the annual innovation competition and exhibition are Number one, to reduce the challenges of sourcing skilled and trained personnel to meet the requirements of emerging and new global technologies and modern tools. Two, to increase investment in youth 
and promotion of SMEs, small and medium scale enterprises for new business delivery breakthrough. Three, promote local content with emphasis on the tech ecosystem. And four, create an opportunity for startups to meet with venture capitalists. Amongst other goals, the ICT innovation for exhibition have helped to encourage continued innovation among the youth tech entrepreneurs. Annual action. This program is designed to challenge startups and tech hubs in Nigeria to produce impactful and sustainable innovative solutions that will address common societal challenges using digital technologies. 2021, under this program, the Commission awarded 9 million Naira research grants to three Nigerian startups with the most innovative digital solutions containing the pandemic and epidemic in those countries going through. In 2021, the Commission also awarded under the same program 5 billion Naira research grants to four Nigerian startups in the areas of uh, Internet of Things solutions for kidnapping and identity in Nigeria and assistive robotics solutions to effective e-waste management. The ICT Park project. The Commission is building, as we speak, six technology parks across the six geopolitical bonds and it is in the process of completing this first phase of the project in four of the six geopolitical bonds, namely Enugu in the southeast, Abeokuta in the southwest, Nedugur in the northeast, Kano in the northwest. Such a certain intent of boosting digital skills among youths, I mean among young Nigerians, promoting innovations, providing jobs for young Nigerians, and ultimately supporting the federal government's digital agenda. I think in the second phase of this project, we are going to see ICT parks uh, about in two more locations. Uh, I think for your state, small location, and for most state in our. The ICT Park project, which is at various levels of competition, will deliver a fully functional tier 4 digital industry complex that will involve a commercial hub for ICT capacity building and digital skills, employment creation, entrepreneurial activities, as well as smart city development across the country. Then we have the national essay competition posters. Or for use, the Commission also organizes a national essay competition targeting all undergraduate students in Nigerian tertiary institutions, both private and public, with the following eligibility criteria as stated from point one to five. The objective of this program are to engage and enhance research in tertiary institutions, encourage academic competition and excellence, and build capacity of undergraduates in Nigerian tertiary institutions. Then we have the Digital Awareness Program, DAF. This was launched in 2004. It's one of the Commission's special intervention projects aimed at creating ICT awareness among secondary schools in Nigeria. DAF was initiated as a corporate social responsibility uh, project in response to the digital information knowledge gap observed in the country. The objective of DAF, ladies and gentlemen, to encourage the adoption and usage of ICT in public secondary schools across the country. The facilities provided to secondary schools include desktop computers, tables and chairs, local area network, printers, scanners, research equipment, and one year bandwidth subscription for high speed internet access and training of selected school personnel. These facilities are complemented with alternative power supply, mostly sent by generators and building builds and steward computer laboratories with the necessary accessories and from its inception this project has been implemented in over 500 secondary schools in the six global homes of the country. Then we have the advanced digital appreciation program for tertiary institutions. Adapt to bridge the knowledge skills gap in higher institutions of learning while taking into cognizance both the nation's and individual gains achieved 
in the lives of beneficiary students and institutions under the DAF project, the Commission strategically developed several intervention capacity building programs such as the laptop project, the e project, wireless internet cloud project, e-health, and virtual examination center projects. So this are we recognize that there is enormous payment in our use and there is need therefore for the NCC to come in and participate in empowering them to provide more innovation, innovative solutions to the multitude of you know, solu uh, challenges you know, facing this country. In conclusion, um, the, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Trustees, members of the Board of Trustees, the Board Chancellor and Chairman of Council, Vice Chancellor, uh, members of uh, the congregation, Senate and congregation, as well as uh, other principal officers of the university. The chancellor, I mean, I have repeated this, my colleague in the academia, graduating students, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the recognition of the innovative minds of Nigerian youth, the NCC has put in place various ICT youth empowerment initiatives to aid in creating a digitally secured workforce that will fit into the digital economy project of Nigeria, consistent with the index as well as the National Broadband Plan 2020 to 2025. Furthermore, the Commission is committed to fostering partnership and collaboration with the technology of powers and startups to accelerate innovation and the creation of a digitally skilled workforce for industrial growth and sustainable development of the nation. Finally, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the critical role of the ubiquitous broadband infrastructure cannot be emphasized because the International Telecommunications Union stated this in one of their publications, that any country that wishes to develop in the 21st century should make broadband infrastructure as basic infrastructure. Just like water infrastructure, road infrastructure, power infrastructure, and so on and so forth. And in that, in, in that document of the IT, it says, build broadband infrastructure and everything else will put into place. The ability to provide the best quality of education for our use, the ability to use and manage energy efficiently, the ability to use, um, the ability to reach isolated populations you know, and provide them with quality healthcare services, and above all, the ability to meet the sustainable development goals. This is not the same. Sorry. And finally, the critical role here, yeah, I mentioned this, cannot be emphasized, therefore, for broadband infrastructure. And therefore, I call on all relevant stakeholders to ensure that telecoms infrastructure challenges, such as right of ways, because of digital access, sites and locations for the deployment of broadband infrastructure. States, governments, local governments, some instances, even the federal government are charging a exorbitant piece for the deployment of fiber infrastructure, and this will form fair to deny the deployment of this much needed infrastructure in various parts of the country, especially in areas that we refer to as underserved and unserved areas with telecommunication services. And therefore, we must come together to find ways of addressing this challenge on right of way and ensure a solution is found as soon as possible. Equally well, there is a problem of vandalism of uh, infrastructure, multiple taxation and regulations which need to be addressed for our sustainable development, especially use empowerment, building the ICT system. On a final note, I thank you very much for the attention. I ask the timekeeper you know, to be indicating whether I have exceeded my time. I, I did not see any sign. It also went to the chair and within the time. Then, thank you very much. I thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to recognize the presence of the man of the state party in the very
Okay. Also, I'd like to describe the text of Irene Mustafa for Togo Land. This man is badly donated and said that love you to us. It's a person of a large Ghanaian and Thank you so very much for coming around. We really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to inform you that at the end of this conversation left off, it might be too late to to start it immediately. So that note, please and get out I'd like to find it. Uh, the Registrar of Party University, so please give a closing remark and vote of thanks. I invite the podium to Dr. Kikelo Mon, who has taken silence. I was Franklin University, the National Life Party Society, the Board of Trustees of Franklin University, the Council and members, the Vice Chancellor and Senate, Staff and students of Fountain University, I'd like to express our profound gratitude to the guest lecturer for the beautiful lectures that was beautifully delivered. We thank you very much, sir. Sir, I would like to claim your indulgence that we would like to come to Abuja. When they give you time to your balance, you usually decorate. And make one cake. So, what you want to have to do that and bring all the paraphernalia of that office, the Ashiwaju of Fountain University of Shogo. Before we do that, sir, while you are away, before we come to Abuja, we like you to carry this along with you to continuously remind you of Fountain University. Sir. Of course. Yes, sir.
It is because those numbers are numbers of the victims. They are using the victim numbers okay, to demand for ransom. But here is the other flip side of the argument. No matter what handset they use, we have the capacity to trace the location of where these calls are coming from, demanding ransom. All it takes is for the calls to be made. In fact, I will step, go a step further. Even if the devices are not used to make calls, but provided they are on, power is on, that is all we need in order to establish the location of where this kidnappers are. We have been doing that. You know, I'm not you know, part of the security architecture of this country. But when you ask people you know, in the security uh, sector of the economy, they will confirm to you that a lot of success has been recorded in containing the menace of banditry and kidnapping. Like it has never been recorded before. Okay, so this is addressing our question. Now, cyber security, we have what we call the computer incidents in our response team in the NCC. We have the communications from cyber security. We have this protection. Okay? At the national level, we have the NGSAT, the Nigeria Computer Emergency Response Team. Okay, what's up? 